Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net. We were at the Crytek booth. I am joined by a couple of CryEngine folks here, and we're, we're speaking with Scott, who is an engine programmer, and Xena, who is a 3D environment artist. And today we're talking about PBR and a couple of the terms that you run into when researching PBR. So uh, for those of you who follow our Star Citizen coverage, PBR is discussed very heavily by Chris Roberts and the team, and they're pretty excited about it. So we're, we're gonna define what that is here today. Uh, let me just start with the, the easy question. What is the top level definition of physically based rendering? What does it do for, for the, the gamer? The top level definition is it, it has lighting techniques that treat light the way it really behaves in the world. So you have conservation of energy, you never get more light out than you put in, you have uh, physically correct uh, distribution patterns of light and, and uh, physically accurate material definitions. So with mentioning material definitions, what are, what are the different types of materials that need to be considered in the environment for PBR? Well, for example, uh, the very big difference is between metal and non-metals, and this is where we cut the line. So every non-metal has a specific uh, value in spec map, and um, metals have color in the spec map. So this is the, like, we only separate non-metal and metal. And uh, so you're, you're mentioning spec maps, specular maps. There are other types of maps as well. Can we get an overview of the the most um, or the, uh, the most common maps that are run into? Yeah, of course. So um, diffuse map, albedo, which is barely uh, without any lighting information, and then we have the normal map. And in the normal map, alpha channel goes the norm, uh, goes the gloss map and the specular map. And the specular map we only need if there's a couple of different materials in the same asset, for example wood and metal, then you would need a spec map. If not, you just define the value via the slider. But you always need a gloss map and a diffuse map. On, a, on the performance side, uh, so I, I would imagine a lot of this is GPU side, but is, is there any actual noticeable performance impact? There's not a big performance impact. It's just computing light in a, a different way than it did before, using equations that are just more accurate. So you get a very realistic look with, with less effort. Uh, the actual shader computations are not n significantly uh, different, more, more or less. So. so visually for gamers, do you have any examples, even using your own tech demos as a, as a basis here, do you have any examples of objects that are encountered in-game uh, where gamers can look at it and know this is using PBR? Well, uh, if they play Rise, everything's PBR. <laughs> so you just need to play one of the latest Crytek games and everything's PBR. So every object they look at will have physics-based rendering or shading. And uh, speaking of Rise, a couple other games use it. We know Star Citizen's using it. Uh, with Rise in, in development, did PBR on a technique side change how the game developers are building the, the lighting for the games, or did, did it make it easier for them? Well, for artists especially, it's um, way much easier to tweak the assets. Normally, you would have to tweak it for different lighting conditions, you would have to tweak it darker and everything, and with PBR, you can make it in one setting, and it will work for every setting. Very cool. So there's our, our top-level overview of PBR. We'll cover some of the map, uh, the map terms that were defined here in the article, linked in the description below. Check out all the content. Of course, thank you to CryTech, and check out CryEngine uh, for more information on that. We will see you all next time.